everyone, today we are looking at the Bauer Long Throw Random Orbital DA Polisher. While watching this video, you're going to see the unboxing and exactly what you get. I'm also going to disassemble the gearbox and install new grease into the head of the unit. And lastly, I'm going to switch from the factory 6 inch backing pad to a 5 inch. Do not skip the details in this section if you're interested in doing this. The way it mounts is different than the older DA polisher from Harbor Freight. In the description, I will have time jumps for each of those points of interest if you want to skip ahead. I will also put Amazon links to some of the items mentioned in this video that help support the channel. At the making of this video, the polisher is priced around the $100 mark and is considered an upgrade to the original dual action polisher that's still available from Harbor Freight for around $60. The trigger is a snap action switch. You set the speed at the top with the rotating dial and you can also lock the unit on with the trigger hold button on the left hand side. So without any further delay let's jump into the disassembly process. Also while I got started right away I want to mention it's a good idea to plug your unit into the wall if you haven't tested it and make sure it actually works before you take it apart, reassemble it, and find out that there are uh, any issues. I'm going to get started by removing the black plastic caps on either side of the unit with a large Phillips screwdriver. Once you get the side caps removed, take the included hex wrench and use it to remove the bottom plate. There's no hold button like on some orbital tools, so you're just going to use your hand to hold the pad while you undo the bolt with the wrench. Once you get the backing plate removed, what you're looking at is the counterweight. If you've watched other videos on the disassembly process of this dual action polisher, then you may recall that most of them show you removing the counterweight to get to the screws that hold the gearbox together. This step is not required, and you can access the gearbox without doing that extra process. At each of the four corners of the gearbox is a Phillips head screw. You will need to remove them one at a time and completely as if they are partially out you can't rotate the counterweight to get to the next screw. Once you feel you've undone each screw fully I found it easiest to use needle nose pliers to pull the screw out the rest of the way. I do want to show you the full process but I'm going to speed through it so the video does not drag on forever. The key is a good screwdriver and needle nose pliers to make the job easy. Also notice on the second screw I struggled a bit. I believe it wasn't fully loose when I tried to pull it with the pliers, so I cut it out but I went in and loosened it up uh, before continuing. If you feel at any point you're struggling with removing a screw, go ahead try loosening it some more before getting back on it with your needle nose pliers. Now once you get all four screws fully removed, you can work on wiggling loose the plate to open up the gearbox. I rocked it back and forth until it came loose. What you may notice while I'm wiggling it is that when you undo the screws that hold the transmission plate on, that's also what holds the plastic counterweight shield. The wiggle seems excessive, but it's really just the plastic cover being loose between the plate and the counterweight. Okay, now that you have the plate separated from the rest of the polisher, you want to remove as much of the original grease as possible. On the gear that's on the back side of the plate, remove the grease around its edge, then begin to remove the grease from the main casing. Uh, this may take a little bit of effort to scoop it all out, but you want to have as much removed as possible for replacing with new grease. I use Q-tips, but you can use just about anything. Just be careful not to leave anything behind from when you remove the grease. Um, as you can see, I left some behind, but got most of the big globs removed. At this point, you're ready to put in your new grease. I have a grease gun that has a high-quality multi-purpose grease already in it. In the description, I will link a comparably good product made by Lucas Oil. Their red and techie grease will do the same job, and at around $5, you can't beat the price. You can also go to your local hardware store or farm store and buy it in person. Keep in mind these tubes are meant to go into grease guns, but you could scoop it out by hand if you don't have a gun. Once you put the grease back in the main case and around the gear on the underside of the plate, you are ready to be in the reassembly process. Press the back plate onto the case as best you can and insert a screw into the where the counterweight is along clearance. You may find it's easier to use needle nose pliers again to reinsert the screws. After the first screw is tight, I'm going to the opposite corner for the next screw. 
this is the best practice to help seat the plate, much like you would follow a torque sequence on a car wheel. After you get all four of the screws tightened down, it's a good idea to go back over each of them in a torque sequencing pattern to make sure they're still tight. Phillips heads are not the best design, but with a proper screwdriver, you can get moderate torque on these screws. Now that the gearbox is reassembled, you can slide the top cover back onto the polisher and reinsert both of the plastic pieces into those holes. Now we are ready to install a 5 inch backing plate. In my hand is the factory 6 inch plate that was included. If you found other videos referencing an Astro brand plate that has a stud installed, that will not work on this polisher. The Astro plate is made for the original Harbor Freight polisher that is similar to a Porter Cable dual action. They don't feature the same design on how the backing plate is attached. The good news is the Chemical Guys Torque 5 inch backing plate will work on this polisher. Be sure to check out the description for a link to that backing plate. Notice on the torque plate how there is a flat molded into it just like on the factory plate. You'll be able to reuse the same socket head cap screw that came from the factory. Just make sure you pull out that serrated lock washer as well before attaching the torque plate. You can hold the pad while tightening the screw into the polisher to keep it from rotating. As far as pads, if you don't have any yet, I would recommend picking up a pad sampling kit from Chemical Guys, which will be linked in the description. This kit contains a cutting pad, a polishing pad, and a finishing pad, along with pad cleaning spray. That's all for today, folks. Be sure to like this video if it helped you, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Leave a comment below with any questions, and I will get back to you as well. Thanks.